All right, we're going to start moving away from uh, like the finite dimensional group theory. Well, no, we're not going to move away from that. We're going to move on to representation theory pretty soon here. And so there's a lot of finite groups going on in the background, but the it, it's got it's definitely got a different flavor to it. It feels a little more analytic in my opinion um just some of the computations um it feels like a little more like uh well i guess it sort of makes sense that it would feel almost a little more like functional analysis because there is a lot of um linear algebra going on in here um and functional analysis is more or less linear algebra in infinite dimensional vectors well not not vector spaces but just spaces um, anyways, that's a, that's a whole nother story, but, um, what we're going to do is, like, for a lot of the stuff that we've done in this series, some basic background of vector, um, of, of linear algebra and vector spaces has sort of been assumed, so we're going to do a review of some topics in, um, linear algebra, and so I'm going to go through this kind of quick. Or at least, hopefully, I'll go through it quick. Um, this is all kind of under the assumption that you've seen most or all of this material before. And if you haven't, you could just go and look up any textbook in linear algebra and find it. Um, a vector space. V is an abelian group. Under addition, um, with scalar multiplication, um, that goes from C cross V into V. Here we're gonna we're just gonna assume complex um, vector vector spaces over uh, C for the most part. Um, anyways. What do we have? We have this distributivity, C v1 plus C v2, um, C1 plus C2, V is Z1 V plus Z2 V. We've got Z1 of Z2 V equals Z1 Z2 V and 1 V equals V. This looks a lot like rings. We'll get to that. That's because it is a ring. But anyways, um, yeah, so this is just, oh, of course, Z1 and Z2 are complex numbers and V1 and V2 are vectors. If there's just a Z, it's complex. If there's just a V, it's a vector. Anyways, um, a linear map. F going from vector spaces V1 to V2. I'm going to do my best to make my uppercase Vs look like uppercase ones and lowercase look like lowercase, but I mean, there's only so much you can do. It's not great notation, but like there's only so many letters in the alphabet and there's like a lot of them that look the same uppercase and lowercase. Um, like K, sometimes an X, and V, and maybe others like snake letter. A linear map is a hom is a homomorphism of the um, of the abelian groups. Um, so basically what that means is that if you um, Yeah, so let's write out what that means. F of V1 plus V2 equals F V1 plus F V2. That's the addition. And F of lambda V equals lambda F of V. And this is, of course, the scalar multiplication. Um, so yeah. 
Okay, well, I guess I switched from Z to Lambda here. I think Lambda is more of a typical, like, functional analysis type scalar, but... So, that, so that's why Lambda is sort of ingrained in my head um, from doing a lot of analysis. But anyways, so we've got this stuff. Um, the space of linear maps is, we'll just call it HOM C V1 V2. C just that specifies the vector field that we're working over. Um, this is a vector space, it turns out, since um, F1 plus F2 applied to V is F1 of V plus F2 of V and z of f of v is z of f of v. Um, so let's see here, what are we using here in this definition? Um, when, we, when we apply this stuff to, when we're applying this to v, then we get something in v2 and then we use the linear we use that v2 as a vector space to break it up like this then we take zf of v we're looking at something in v2 and so we look at the um um so we use v2 to get this and so actually um just as an aside so turns out um You can get, not can can, get a space, um, and then we'll say set x v2 if x is just a set. Okay, so I guess that's neat, and you should think about that when you're defining something. Are you using everything that you um, assumed? And here we're not using that V1 is a vector space, and so you can define a perfectly good vector space um, if you just start it in a, in a set. Okay? Okay, so that's that. Okay. The dimension of V1 or dim V1 which we will set as M1 um, is the number of elements in a basis for V1. And in this we're only going to be talking about finite dimensional vector spaces. I know that makes it a little boring but I mean we got you got to start somewhere i guess um also yeah um so every vector space has a basis and if it's finite dimensional then that number is um that dimension is unique we're not going to prove that um that's really uh some of the more fundamental material in linear algebra so we'll just assume that you know that um Tom C from V1 to V2 is isomorphic to the collection of M2 by M1 complex value matrices. Um, where um, the map if we have some f that's a linear map from v1 to v2 um, yields a matrix um, satisfying 
and we'll call it just AIJ. Um, and when I say this, I mean that um, it's a matrix and its entries are in indexed by AIJ, where I ranges from 1 to M2 and J ranges from 1 to M1. Yep. And it satisfies um, F of VI1 is... You know, I'm going to use V's and W's. F of VI equals sum from J equals 1 to M2 of AIJ WJ, where so your VI is a basis for V1 and WI a basis for V2. Okay, so that's how you get matrices out of this. Okay, cool. So what else do we have? Um, given, and of course, there's so many definitions here, I'm not separating them, I'm just writing everything out. So given a vector space V, um, it's dual is V star, which is just um, the Hom space from V into the underlying scalar field C. F, if we have a linear map from uh, V to W, yields um, a um, map from W star to V star um, by taking F star, let's see here, F star is a map from um, F star is a map from no for F star you plug in a map that sent, that goes from W to C and then you get a complex number C out of it so F um, F star we gotta plug in a um, element of W, which we, we'll call psi or xi. I don't, I don't know what it is. Um, and xi is an element of this Hom space, and so um, okay. So what are what what our what are our arguments? So. If we evaluate this at V, this is going to equal xi of f of V um, for all xi in W star and for all V lowercase in V uppercase. Okay, so why does this make sense? So um, okay, yeah, so F star, we're going to plug in an element of W star, which is going to be a homomorphism from W into the complex numbers. So that's going to be given by Xi. Um, and so you plug that in, but then what you get is you get a, is you get a map from uh, V into C. And so in order to figure out what this map looks like, the only natural way to kind of see what it looks like is to figure out where it sends an element of V. So that's why we plug in this V here, because we want to see what this, because um, this thing is, is a homomorphism from V into C. And so we want to know where it sends a vector V. And it sends it precisely to this value. Um, and so let's make sure that this makes sense. Psi, um, F of V, F is going to send um, v to W, so F of V, this is going to give us something in W, and then applying Xi of W, Xi is a map, Xi is a linear map from W into C, and so we're plugging in something, uh, we're plugging in a particular W here, and that's going to give us something in C, and so indeed this all, this all works out the way you would, you would hope that it would. 
Okay. All right. So let's see here. I think we've got time and space for one more thing. And we're just going to list a fact here. Um, if vi from 1 to m is a basis for v and we define vi star in v capital V star um, satisfies um, it's the element satisfying um, v i star. So v i star, I got to tell you where it sends an element of v. Um, let's take a vector or a basis element v j. It's going to be delta i j. Okay, so. Does this make sense? Um, certainly, yeah. If you um, plug in um, a basis element here into vi star, then it's going to give you either a 1 or a 0. It's going to give you a 1. If i equals j, it's going to give you a 0 if they're not equal. Um, and so certainly it's mapping everything into the right place. Um, and so we're defining it on a basis. And so what you can do is because you're defining it on a basis, you can extend it to a linear map by just um, doing sort of like like you you extend it linearly. So you say let's say we want to um, evaluate v i star of lambda v j. Then we would def we would just let let that be lambda times delta i j. So it would be lambda if i and j are equal and lam and zero if i and j are not equal. Similarly, if you took like a vj plus vk, then vi star vj plus vk would be delta ij plus delta ik. And so since you define it this way um, for scalar multiples and linear and um, plus mul um, and sums, should not forget the word sum, uh, sums of basis elements, you can define it for the whole vector space. Um, so it's defined everywhere, and it's defined such that it's a homomorphism. Um, so certainly it's in V star, and so that's what we wanted to verify. So anyways, we take these things. Then VI star, of course going from 1 to M is a basis for v star and that is just a standard fact about um, about dual spaces and it's like like I mentioned it's one of the first things you cover so you can just check that if you need a refresher and yeah next time we'll start talking about um, more of the complicated basics of vector spaces, if that makes sense as a sentence. Um, basically, we're going to be talking about things like products. Um, but anyways, we'll get into that next time.